Today on What It's Like 1955 Hudson Cross Country Rambler Wagon, this wagon could also be had exactly the same or almost exactly the same as a Nash. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we cover the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. Dive in deep with specs, period correct ads, take the tour, button switches, and knobs. But most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. We are back at Old Spokes in Cootstown, Pennsylvania with the world's largest Hudson Museum. If you're ever in the area, be sure to check this gem out. I believe it's by appointment only, so I will link all of the information to the museum in the description. Nash and Hudson merged in May of 1954 to form one of the most underrated, overlooked companies to ever exist, American Motors Corporation, or AMC for short. The merger was a Nash takeover of Hudson, but it really doesn't matter because George Mason, the guy with the plan, died suddenly and his plans wasn't in George Robney's plans. Imagine for a minute that George Mason lived. That one thing could have changed everything. There was talks that Studebaker and Packard were going to get under the AMC umbrella. Later on, AMC would go on to buy Kaiser Jeep. Imagine a Packard Jeep. It could have happened. Packard could have offered a Land Rover-like product before Land Rover at a more affordable cost and, most importantly, more reliable. So anyway, George Mason dies October 8th, 1954. Rodney takes over. The Packard-Studebaker deal is basically just gets left on the cutting room floor. Nash and Hudson sort of, in a way, died the same day that Mason died. Nash and Hudson's names were last used on AMC products in 1957. Rodney went all in on Rambler and subcompact series American in 1958. Getting back to the 1955 Hudson model lineup. It's important to note that both Nash and Hudson were bodied by Penan Farina. Starting in the basement was the Rambler series, which could be badged as a Nash or a Hudson. Metropolitan also falls in this category, which could also be badged as a Hudson or a Nash. Next up was the Hudson Wasp followed by the Hudson Hornet, and then buyers could also get the Hudson Italia. But getting back to the Hudson Rambler line, Hudson Rambler could be had as a four-door sedan, two-door country club, two-door sedan, two-door suburban, and four-door cross-country wagon. Four trim levels were available in the Rambler line, starting in the basement. The actual basement was the special and it was a stripped down economy model, more or less for like a fleet vehicle. Rubber around the windshield, no chrome, painted headlight bezels. Stepping up to the deluxe gave you plated headlight bezels, deluxe script in the front fenders, plain hood scoop, no hood ornament, slightly upmarket interior. Stepping up to the mid-level super would give you a hood ornament and chrome air scoop trim band around the hood scoop. Custom was the top trim, custom script on the fender, continental spare tire kit in the back, and just a way nicer interior overall. I also read that the custom was the only one that offered the rear vent windows. As previously mentioned, Hudson and Nash both could have their name on a Rambler in 1955 as well as 56, and the only major differences were the badging on the hood slash grill section, horn center button, and H symbols on the hubcaps. 1954 was genesis for the legendary Nash Cross Country Rambler Wagon. It all started in 1954. The 1955 is essentially a carryover body design with two key differences. The grill is different and the front wheel wells are cut out on the 55. So a bit different today. This episode is like coming full circle in a way. One of the channel's first reviews was a 56 Hudson Cross Country. Let's compare 1955 to 1956. 55 on the top, 56 on the bottom, starting in the front. These are totally different. Just want to show where the design evolved to. 
First thing you'll see is how much bigger the cross country gets in 1956. And keep in mind, both of these cars are unit body constructed. So if you go and look at one of these in person, make sure that you scrutinize the undercarriage because it's all one piece. These are notorious for rusting in half. So before pointing out all of the differences, how about some similarities? Both have the cow air vent at the base of the windshield. Both have that roof line dip. Both have single headlights. Both have the front and rear vent windows. Both have roof racks. Both door handles are the same. 1956 rear wheel wells are cut out. Bumpers are different. Headlights are mounted lower on the 56. Different hood ornaments. The 55 has a hood scoop. The 56 has a wraparound windshield. 56 looks taller and way bigger in every measure, which is more easily seen at the side shot. The 55 looks more rounder, whereas the 56, it's not slab styled, but it's just not, it doesn't have that rounded look that the 55 has. Both cars, though different, have the same roof line, vent windows, both front and back, though designed different. Different wheel covers. 1955 has a lower belt line trim. I don't know if you'd call that lower belt line or top of the rocker panel trim that the 56 simply doesn't have. The gas filler caps are roughly in the same place. Rear taillights are more elongated on the 56. Also, the 56 has what looks to be reverse lights where the 55 doesn't appear to have. Just look at the size difference. Moving inside to the dash, these are both basic dashes, but totally different. The steering wheels are different. Full horn ring on the 55, whereas the 56 only has half a horn ring. Which do you like better in the comment section below? Moving on to specs. 186.25 inches long, 73 and a half inches wide, 108 inches is the wheelbase that it rides on. It weighs 2,870 pounds. Price! $1,775, which is equivalent to you spending $19,925.04 in year 2023. That would be like going and buying a Kia Soul for about the same money now. And it's important to note that you could get the same price for either Nash or Hudson. It didn't matter. All right, moving on to engine. Only one engine on offer for the Rambler series car. That was the 195.6 cubic inch displacement inline flathead six. It was introduced in 1952 and it was produced in different variations until 2006. But the 195.6 was offered from 1952 to 1965 in this configuration. The 195.6, more often referred to as simply the 196, started life as a flathead engine, and it was AMC's first inline six, was originally designed for Nash to be an economy engine. This engine would become a staple for AMC. 1956, they would offer overhead valve, and to save on tooling costs, it's the same block as used on the flathead. 56 and 57 AMC did not offer the flathead, but for whatever reason, they decided to bring it back in 58, and it was on offer alongside the overhead valve until 1965. The cylinders are cast in Siamese pairs, and there aren't any water jackets in between cylinder pairs. This engine is known for head gasket issues. Head bolts need tightened as a routine maintenance thing, but the biggest issue with these engines is you never, ever want to run them hot. Running temperature for this engine is between 190 and 195. Running hot is 215, and at that temperature, you will do irreversible damage to the engine. If you have a car with a 195.6 flathead engine or the overhead valve engine, I found a really good source with a lot of information. I will link it in the description. Let's talk engine specs. 195.6 cubic inch displacement flathead in line six, 3.2 liters. It's good for 90 brake horsepower, 3,800 RPM. Bore of 3.1 inches, stroke of four inches. Compression, 725 to one. It features four main bearings. Three transmissions on offer, three-speed manual, three-speed manual with overdrive, or the GM Hydromatic, which was a four-speed automatic transmission. When backed by a three-speed manual transmission, 0 to 60 could be had in 17.9 seconds. Theoretical top speed, 83 miles per hour. 17 through 20 is the average fuel economy. You could get more with overdrive. Ads claimed up to 30 miles to the gallon. 
If you have one of these or had one of these, what was your experience? Post your experience in the comment section below. I'm really intrigued to hear what the gas mileage actually was in real world use. to today's traffic problems and a complete new idea in luxury travel. Introducing the brilliant 1955 Rambler Cross Country, a new idea car for today's fast-moving, far-traveling family. Here's all the glamour you've always wanted, plus all the luggage room you've always hoped for. And for even more baggage, there's this swanky new idea travel rack on top of the roof. But that's not all. Think of having reclining seats to nap the children of camping along the way with famous twin travel beds. And if you come to dread today's crowded roads, the new Rambler is a revelation. It's a car that turns in the shortest space of all, a car that parks easily where others dare not try, a car that steps away from traffic with lightning ease. And with all this sparkling performance, you still get up to 30 miles a gallon. And for 1955, this brilliant new Rambler offers all-season air conditioning that cools in summer heats in winter, and filters fresh air, all for less than you'd pay for a car without this great feature. See and drive the new 1955 Rambler Cross Country at all Nash and Hudson showrooms. Still another reason why American Motors means more for Americans. All right, let's talk styling. This is one of my favorite wagons of all time. They only made this one year, 1955. This one's a Hudson, which makes it even rarer. It's got a scoop here, and it has little holes in it, so it is functional. Flying lady on the top there. Just notice how the bumpers are designed. They wrap clear around. Notice there's like a little indentation in or bulge in the center. Beautiful egg crate grill up here. Just check this out. This is for the vet. Notice all these lines in the hood. Coming around the side, just notice how these fenders flare out. Back here. That's a pretty aggressive flare. Bright work down here on the bottom, just above the rocker. Notice how it curves down underneath. Look at how these doors are designed. Look very Nash Metropolitan-like. Door handles or put your hand up underneath there and you pull it towards you. Very interesting design door handles those are. Notice there isn't a fender skirt. That's all solid. Coming to the rear, check out these like, they're not really fins, they're more like protrusions. I love how this all comes down. Nice roof rack here towards the back. Tie down section. Notice this one has dip. Nissan Armada copied it. So if you ever see a Nissan Armada, it has the same roof line dip. Back up so you can see that a little bit better. The tailgate itself. Yeah. Oh, cool. It, it latches just like the other one did. Yeah. Isn't that the tiniest tailgate you've ever seen? But look at all the space you have for stuff once the seats are all folded out of the way. 
on to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right, headlights, turn signals, single gauge cluster that sits directly in front of the driver, speedometer at the top, odometer just below it, oil pressure and amp meter are both idiot lights, coolant temperature, gasoline gauge. Taking a gander under the hood, this one has been fitted with the overhead valve 6. Look at the oil filter placement. Engine looks at home in this engine bay. On the positive side, Pioneer of compact cars gets good gas mileage, very affordable, and they are very cute, aren't they? Against it, unit body construction, rust is always a threat. You have to keep up with the routine maintenance on these cars. Also, that plays into the same hand as routine maintenance. You also have to check out the trunnions and make sure that those are in good shape. This car has trunnions. And I've heard horror stories where people were driving down the road and the whole front end just hit the ground because the trunnions wore out. So you got to keep that in mind as well. All right, now it's time for Would You Rather? Two scenarios today. 1955 Ford four-door wagon or a 1955 Rambler cross-country four-door wagon or a 1955 Chevy four-door wagon. I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. All right, moving on to the second scenario. What would you rather have? 1954 Rambler cross-country wagon or 1955 Rambler cross-country wagon or 1956 Rambler cross-country wagon. All right, now it's time for Name That Tune. First person to get both the correct name of the band and song title. Both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. Facebook is honestly the easiest way to get in touch with me. Uh, find me on there and shoot me an instant message. If you don't have Facebook and would like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, shoot me an email. All of that will be linked in the description below. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, here are some scenes for our next episode. 1961 Ford Galaxy. That's what's coming up next on What It's Like. Tune in Sunday, 4.30 Eastern Standard Time to catch that episode. And until then, toodaloo!